Good morning, everyone. So we have a special guest uh, speaker here today to our undivided attention to Paul. So Paul well, thank you. So I appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Paul Schwartz. I'm with U.S. Foods here with my colleague, Julian Hopp, and I appreciate getting a little bit of your time. So if you give me just about 10 minutes, I'm going to tell you about some exciting opportunities we have, because frankly, I'm here to recruit. Right? Um, and what we're looking for is people who have a real passion to learn, that want to come work at a company that's using technology in a, a number of different ways across all areas of our business. Someone who uh, wants to look, looking for a full-time career, but also makes a few bucks this summer, right? And um, and so what I want to do is tell you a little bit more about that. But if we, um, all right, I have control. Uh, just to cover the agenda, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. Uh, talk a little bit about U.S. Foods and why after 28 years I'm still excited to come to work every day. If you can believe that. Um, it's true. And talk about some of the opportunities, specifics around the job roles that we have. And then finally the process and uh, see if you have any questions. All right, so a little bit of history about me. Um, yeah, I'm old. All right, so I uh, started um, in high school. Everyone had that one teacher that had a real impact on you, I think, probably. Um, maybe it's your professor here. Um, but uh, for me, it was my high school teacher, Mr. Murphy. Still don't even know what his first name was, but it was algebra class, and he brought computer programming into the classroom. And I was fascinated by it. And I had two parents um, that, that wanted to encourage me, so they went and bought me a state-of-the-art interact computer, 1978. 2 megahertz processor, 8K of memory, 32K cassette type for storing my programs. The display was 17 by 12 lines or 112 by 78 pixels. You guys are really jealous, I can tell. I can just see it now. Right? But I'll tell you, I was enthralled. I thought, wow, I, I, you know, I'm going to write a game. So first game, of course, showing my age again, was Pong. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write Pong. So I figured out how to put a dot on the screen. And I thought, you know what? If I erase that dot and draw it next to it, it looks like it's moving, right? Now I can use algebra and it can move in a line or I can use trigonometry and bounce it off a wall. And I was not dismayed by the fact that it took 30 seconds for the ball to get from one side of the screen to the other, right? A little slow. But it was really exciting and I was hooked, right? I was, I mean, I wanted to be a computer programmer. I wanted to build great things like Pong 2, right? Um, but um, I'm not gonna go through and bore you with my career, but I will tell you that getting experience while you're still in school is really important and it can be really powerful. I didn't have the benefit of an intern program, or at least didn't know they existed, um, so I went and had to kind of hustle myself. And again, about the only thing I can show you is that I uh, learned a little bit about business. I did a uh, fixed bid, one of my first fixed bid contracts while I was in college, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You offer a certain amount of money to do something, and it was a piece rate payroll system for a, a company that was doing uh, work with the handicapped, and I bid $2,000. Took me two years to develop and about 1,500 hours of work. So a little more than a buck an hour, right? Not, not very good, but great experience. And I'm hoping to talk to you a little bit about the experience you can get at US Foods and hopefully make a, a good bit more money than that, right? And then um, uh, really, um, I think next is I just want to talk about the company itself and give you a background on US Foods. So how many people have even heard of US Foods? So quite a few, that's great. Um, so food service distribution, that means that we just simply buy food and, and distribute it, right? To anyone who prepares food away from home. Schools, hospitals, restaurants. Um, very large company, 10th largest private company in the US, um, about a quarter million customers. Um, you can see the stats there. So big company, a lot of technology. Um, the IT organization is about 500 folks. Um, there are six organizations essentially here. Strategy and planning does the governance, decides where we make investments. We have three business-facing functions where we face off to the business. We have IT people that understand the business side. They work with business people to come up with ideas for how to drive the business forward, create new services for our customers. And then the application development team, they're the ones that actually develop the programs that we put into production. And then finally, the IT infrastructure and operations, that's my department. That's the help desk, it's database people, network engineers, middleware, Linux, the people that move programs into production people that support the network, take on the calls, manage the data center, the national data centers here in Phoenix. Um, and uh, although we're just starting our intern program, we've been doing it in Chicago for three years and it's been very successful and so we decided to bring it here because we have almost 200 people in my organization and, and, and we think there'll be some great opportunities for some of you there. So just talk a little bit more about technology and although food service may sound pretty simple, you buy a case of tomatoes, you give it to somebody else, you sell it for a little more than you pay for it, you make a profit. It's a lot more than that. 
and in, in, uh, and while we're not widely known outside of food service, I'm surprised to see the hands I did. Um, within food service, we have been leading in technology for as long as I can remember. Um, we've had the first mobile ordering app by far. In a way, um, we were ahead of the competition. We have built applications like Chef, uh, like Menu Profit Builder, we call it, where you take uh, a customer can take their menus and cost out the profitability of each item. We've got a Where's My Truck application, the first one that came came out like it in this industry, where we can tell exactly where the truck is, project delivery times for our customers. Um, we're all over social media, and we even have a chef store here. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's on McClintock and Southern. It's really for restaurant owners, but the public can go there, and it's. Uh, one-stop shopping for a restaurant to get their, um, get their um, food and, and food-related products. And there's some new technology there as well. So as you can see, we're really doing a lot in this space. In fact, in 1999, we built our first website. Um, and it was, uh, we were doing over a billion in sales in e-commerce. We were one of the large, largest internet retailers in the world that no one ever heard of. Right. And this is our latest mobile app. I won't go into detail just to tell you that Lots of new features, we're constantly churning them out. It's some of the areas I'm going to talk about how we need some help in doing that. Right. So let's get into the opportunities, because I think that's what you really want to hear about. Right? There's essentially five positions we're trying to fill right now. If the program works out well, we'll expand it next year. Um, the area of DevOps, have you guys even heard the term DevOps? Um, no, so I see one hand. So if you're a programmer, you're building something that eventually you want to go into production. Right? And in a typical world, the way that happens is in a very um, standard staged approach. So you test, when your programs are ready, they, they get put into a release, somebody QAs them, they get moved into production. It could take several months from the time someone has an idea on what they want until the time it goes into production. It's a long process, and along the way, there's handoffs to my team in operations. And that can take too long, and there can be quality issues when you don't work well together. What DevOps is all about is automation and doing it faster. So you hear about companies like LinkedIn or Facebook, they're putting out new releases two, three times a day. Right? Now in food service, we don't need to get that fast, but today we do it at probably every three or four months, and we're trying to get to do it in weeks or months. Right? So that's one area. Business analytics, I'll talk a lot more about that, but we have some opportunities there, um, especially around IT operations. We've got IT operations itself. We, um, as I said, we have the data center here in Phoenix. We also have the Tempe office where most of the people work, where you'll come work, and that's where our command center is. It's where we watch all of our enterprise systems um, and keep an eye on things, and we have some exciting things going on in, the, in IT operations. Project managers, we're also looking forward to actually help drive the projects we're gonna be talking about here. And then finally, for those of you that um, um, have knowledge of Linux, uh, we're looking for people to do scripting and other things on that platform as well. So a little more details on this. Um, in, in business analytics, we're doing a lot in uh, um, merchandising and sales areas, right? Um, you know, you get those targeted ads, you go into Facebook and it's like, wow, I Googled that. How come I'm getting an ad for that now, right? All that kind of analytics stuff we've been doing for quite a while now, and I want to use those same technologies against IT operations, figure out what's the cost of downtime, predict when we're going to have a failure, those kinds of um, analytics. And so we're looking for people that know analytics like Tableau or Snowflake or SQL, have some of those skills for that kind of a position. Uh, IT operations, this is a picture of the command center. We're building dashboards. We're looking for people that have some programming background or scripting knowledge to help us build these dashboards, um, customize them. Um, again, some of it's scripting. It could be, uh, again, using tools like Tableau or monitoring tools. Um, and if you have an ITIL background, that's also something that would be interesting for this position. Project management I talked about already. We have this standard, what's called waterfall approach, where we do a project from beginning to end in a step-by-step -step approach. And then we have agile for very rapid development, prototyping and turning things around very quickly. And the project managers will have an opportunity to probably do both of those kinds of projects. And then finally, um, I'll, the last two are really around that DevOps. We're looking for people that know scripting, they know how to build Linux environments, they know how to maybe run Bash or Perl or Python or, um, God, there's so many of these new names, Chef, Puppet, and so I think someone's making up these names. I, know they're, I don't know where they come from, but, but they're all the kinds of new programming that we're really trying to get the people that already work for us to learn and do better with, but we'd love to get some of you um, involved in some of those things. And it's both Linux side and middleware. And the reason that is, is when you're spending up things very fast, you actually want to build a server, 
build the application, put it into production, shut the server down so you don't need it anymore for testing. Um, all that kind of automation is this DevOps work that we're talking about. Okay? So well, let me tell you a little bit more about the program now. So we've done it three years in Chicago. It's been really successful, so we're going to follow the same program. We're a little behind in terms of I would have liked to have been out here several months ago, uh, but we're here now and we're going to move forward, but we have to move quickly. So if you are interested, I would say, and, and there's information we have for you to grab on how to apply for it, do it in the next week if you can, because we're going to move quickly. We want to start you know, probably a week or so after your, your you know, school's out, which I think is the first, second week of May. Um, it's a, it's a full-time position. It's, um, we're looking for up to five people right now. You're going to work on real projects. We're not going to give you, you know, go get me coffee or go read these reports and look for the errors. These are going to be real business impacting projects. You're going to have help. You won't be on your own, but you're going to, you're going to work on real things. And you're going to have some real uh, support systems. So we have the program includes a mentor and a buddy. So someone like Julian, who's a manager, um, may be your mentor. But then you have a buddy who will be someone in the group who knows the technical aspects of what you're trying to accomplish, help you there, as well as just kind of give you the lay of the land in the big corporate world. Um, we have social events where we bring the interns together so you can kind of share ideas, what's working, what's not. Um, at the end, you get to present. Uh, to the IT leadership team, which is my peers and my boss, the CIO. Uh, it's, it's no pressure. They all, it's really just about, <laughs> well, a little pressure, right? No. Um, it's really about giving you an opportunity to give feedback on what you thought was good in the program, what you learned, right? And then, you know, if it works out both, you know, if you're a junior and you got another year, there's opportunities for part-time work to continue into the next year, or full-time as well if you're graduating. And we're looking for both of so that's really it. I've got information on how to apply. I went through it pretty quick, so I want to see what kind of questions you have. Do we have time for three Please, questions? Yeah, yeah. I know I, I talk fast, so um, what kind of questions do you have? Yeah. Is this located in Arizona? Tempe, Arizona. It's the ASU, old ASU research park, so we're off of Elliott and 101. Oh, okay. Do you know where that's at? Yeah. Other questions? How many folks think you might be interested in this? Yes, so yes, absolutely. So I should have talked about that a little bit. So we have an exadata, Oracle exadata, a massive data warehouse engine that we use and, and do our reporting with Oracle Business Analytics. Um, but we're finding it's not fast enough and we can't do the kinds of things that Hadoop can do. We're actually, the, the tools I'm talking about for the business analytics, that is using those technologies. So we're using Hadoop, we're using, so we're looking for people that might have experience with Amazon Web Services, we're using S3, we're using Hadoop, we're using um, Snowflake in the cloud running on AWS. So yeah, those are the kinds of technologies in that role that we would, we would love to have some help with. Other questions? Yeah, so I think, first of all, some real world experience delivering something, right? I mean, I think says something. Obviously, just going to school, we're looking for smart people who have gotten through class, right? I mean, I think my first job, although I had experience, was just, wow, if you can get a degree and it's a hard program like this, you must be smart. Because I will tell you, the technologies are going to change. So by the time you graduate, you know, a year from now, you're going to be learning something new. I was working on network protocol handlers. We didn't think TCP IP was going anywhere. <laughs> right. Kind of idea, right? So things change very quickly and you have to go learn on your feet. But so what we'll look we'll look for is someone who can really deliver something in the technologies we're interested. So in the middleware DevOps space, if you'd use Chef to automate uh, code deployments or you wrote scripts to build Linux systems from scratch, those are the kinds of examples I think we would look for in a resume. Yeah. So even if we didn't know something like Hadoop or another language, would you still consider a Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think what we're looking for is the concepts more than the ability and the ability to learn. Because um, most of what we're talking about, by the way, I have a pretty big database team. They've not used any of these things. They're going to be working with you too, and some of the, they'll be learning too. Right? So one of the things we find is, what's one, one of the reasons I said I get excited to come to work every day is 
things are always changing. We get to work on new things, right? So the people we're looking for are ones who want to learn that stuff, right? Don't, I, but I think you have to have some principles um, and knowledge that you can demonstrate. Like I've used some kind of an analytical tool, or I at least know how to use pivot tables in Excel, right? If you understand that concept, you understand analytics. Right? So it doesn't have to be the exact technology, but but if you have one of those skills, that's certainly going to be helpful. Yeah. So uh, are you recruiting just for uh, summer internships, or are you? No. So I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I, I would. My, the greatest success is if I hire every one of the interns. Um, we know that's probably going to be a little bit of a stretch, but that's that's our goal. Um, so we are. Uh, it is a summer program. That's what we have right now. But it could, it will turn into, in fact, we have hired our interns out of Chicago, and the plan would be to do that here if we're successful. Are you doing, uh, I know you mentioned part-time work. Are, are you hiring directly into that? Or? So what we're doing is the intern program right now, but at the end of it, we'll have a conversation. If there's a good fit and you have another year to go, we'll talk about, wow, we'd really love to take you on. Can you, can you do 10, 20 hours a week? One of the things we found from our intern program in Chicago was, some of these folks got in the middle of things and became critical. It's like, what do you mean you're going back to school? We can't afford to lose you. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not kidding. It's, it, happened, it happens pretty fast. You pick something up and you're the expert. And we always joke about that. You touched it last year, now the expert, right? Because things change so much. So um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we're just trying to push you to do more of that and hopefully still let you finish your degree though. Well. I'm curious, so what are more aspects to the Linux? Because you're talking about uh, bash scripting to automate stuff. Bash and Perl and I, I, to be honest, I know C, but I, some of these new ones I don't know, right? So I used to uh, teach a C++ class, but it's been many, many years, so I don't know the languages as well as I used to, but they're more script-oriented for building operating systems or moving code. Um, things around Chef has its own language, uh, around the has its own language. So I think that if you have good programming background, you've taken Java and C, these other languages is going to be, give me a manual. I mean, it's it's really not going to be that hard to pick up, and, and I think we're willing to trade. But you got to have some basic skills on the Linux, let's say Red Hat operating system, or um, in web logic or web servers. So there's got to be grounded in some skills that we can, we feel like, yeah, you'll be able to pick up what you're lacking. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I'm currently doing a bash scripting class. Oh, so okay. So I found that interesting, actually, to bash. Oh. You know, uh, I, I said it because it was written down there. I'll be honest, I don't know what Bash is. I don't know if it's, you know. <laughs> I just really have no idea what it, other than I know it has to do with scripting for our Linux system. But, um, and that, that the manager of that group told me that that's one of the keywords to look for. So, um, you'll see it um, in the, when you go online, you see the postings. We have all the requirements there and the qualifications, so you can see it. And don't get dismayed when you see, you know, 17 things there. You're not going to have them all. But you got to have something there, hopefully, that you can because we recognize we're getting interns. We're not getting folks that are experienced. That's actually what we want, right? We want to try and bring in some fresh uh, talent, uh, people that are um, new to the industry, because honestly, typically, up to now, we've been hiring people with many, many years of experience on this. And, and, and we find that you know, we miss, we're missing something by doing that. Yeah? Um, as a junior in computer science, there's like a lot of options in front of us in terms of working, a lot of really cool options. Like yeah. Sounds like you really like working at US Foods, so I wouldn't really consider food service like the sexiest option <laughs> of like where you work. Um, so like what would you say to convince us of like yeah. taking this over something a little bit more? Smooth? Well, a couple things. One, that the sexiness comes in the technology and how the business is really using it. So I mean you can get really excited about cybersecurity or something. And I, I you know, if you're interested in hacking, that's one thing. If you're interested in seeing how a business can differentiate itself in the marketplace, we're doing that. Uh, the company that's twice our size, we are really <coughs> differentiating because of technology. In fact, you know, we're trying to take the company <coughs> public and they talk about that in the industry, how much we are ahead in technology. And when you get into it, you'll, it's hard to explain if you don't understand food service. But just to give you an example of what happens at night, a restaurant owner is on their mobile app and they place an order at 5 p.m. That order has 42 different products on it freezer and in the, in the, in the refrigeration and the drive, that all is going to end up on a truck at 3 in the morning. It's going to get routed during the middle of the night along with 20 other customer orders. It's going to get picked. It's going to get substituted if it needs to. There's voice technology. So these guys are walking around and they're not 
they're not typing anything. They're talking to a computer over voice, and the computer's talking to them, telling them where to go, telling them, did you get to the right place? Because they walk up and go, check one, two, three. Yep, you're in the right place. I mean, that kind of technology is there. There's uh, technology then to figure out how to build the truck in it, and then there's POD. So and this is something else we lead in the industry, or most of our competitors don't do is, uh, UPS does it, right? You walk up and you can sign and get a real-time invoice. We have that as well, right? One of the first in the industry to do it. So if you understand food service, it's really, really exciting. Yeah, it's not necessarily as groundbreaking as some of those other areas, but you know, most of you are going to end up in places where you're using technology to actually drive a business. And I think this is one of the best places to do it because you're going to see every type of computer and every type of technology. We've got mainframes. We've got the nonstop. We've got Linux. We've got HP Unix. We've got Windows. We've got um, AS400s. So we've got legacy. We've got new. We're running web logic farms. We're running um, uh, buses and DECA product search. The technology, I can go on. I could talk for hours about the technologies we're running, and I, I'm not an expert on half. And that's why it's exciting. When, when we built this data center, it was 1990. There were two computers in the data center. A tandem and IBM took up the entire data center, 10,000 square feet. Guess what? We're still in that same data center. Probably got 5,000 servers in there. It got a lot smaller, more complicated, a lot more moving parts, but we're still in that same place. So constantly evolving and changing. I think that's what's exciting about it. You're going to be around a lot of really smart people, too. And I think that's one of the fun things about it. We're in an open office environment. There's no cubes. I don't have an office. Um, nobody has an office, right? Or, but, but nice and low and open, it's all about collaboration. Uh, and, uh, and, and you're going to work with groups of really smart people, and that's where you're going to learn. So I think that's what's exciting to me. Yeah? Good question. All right, I think on that, let's thank our speaker. Yeah, thank you.